Hello, my friends. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're still finding lots of creative things to do, making lots of art, maybe using your imaginations to think of new games, being kind to your friends and family. This video is a special video from the questions I received from Miss Burgess's class, Hillcrest 202, and students in her class sent me questions and some of them really did stump me so I had to look them up and try to research them so thank you for not only um, asking questions to teach everyone else but in your questions you taught me lots of things too so for the first question was what does your how does your body react to junk food good question so think of your body like a car so you have your car, and in order for your car to run, you need oil and you need gas. You need a lot of other things too, but think of those two substances you need for your car to run smoothly. So if you want your car to run smoothly, you will put nice gas, the nicest gas, and you get oil change every couple of months so your oil is clean, they replace the oil so you're car has nice clean oil running through it to make your car run smoothly to keep it on the road <clears throat> but say you're not able to take good care of your car and you just have to use old oil that you see find sitting around you never get an oil change so it's just running dirty oil dirty oil dirty oil um, think of the gas you give your car is just um, you collecting gas that you see on in a puddle that's been filled with dirt and rainwater and so you just collect that and put it in your car so think of junk food as bad oil and bad gas in your car so we have our body and it's our car junk food is like bad oil and bad gas so it's going to go through our body. It's going to it's going to make our body run because it has energy. But it's going to get stuck in places throughout our body. It's not going to run like a good system throughout our body. It's going to make us really tired. A lot of junk food has a lot of bad fats and a lot of sugar. So those tend to make us very tired. Um, our heart doesn't pump as well. Our brain doesn't function. We get a little tired and we don't think as clearly and our memory doesn't work as well so think of junk food as <clears throat> um bad gasoline and bad oil for your car okay so we want to give our body healthy foods with nutrients and minerals and good energy to keep our system running well one good thing to remember is when you look at a label of the food on the back, the less number of things in the ingredients list, the better. So, and think of healthy food is food that comes from the earth. So plants and animals and beans. So think of foods that come from the earth are going to be the healthiest. That's a good way to remember it. And then another good thing to remember is for our fruits and vegetables, the more colors, the better, okay? The next question was, can you talk more about healthy eating? So, nutrition can be complicated, right? There's, they say micronutrients and macronutrients and, and protein and carb and fat, and it all is kind of overwhelming, right? So, I try to break it down, like I said in my last question, try to eat foods that have less ingredients that are from the earth okay so hot cheetos do those come from the earth no do um takis come from the earth no um so foods that come from the earth are generally healthier so fruits vegetables meats eggs okay so if it's natural here in the world it's generally healthier less ingredients is always better and eat lots of colors so I'll try to break down the types of energy. They call them macronutrients. So that means big nutrients, okay? 
So where you can get your energy is from three separate places. So you've probably heard of fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, okay? So this is where we get our energy to run around and for our heart to beat and for our whole body to use energy to function. Fats, they have different purposes. They're sometimes fat gets a bad name that it's bad for you. Fat is very good for you. It helps absorb vitamins. It helps with hormones. Hormones are little messengers that go through the body and it helps insulate us. So if we didn't have fat to insulate us, we'd always be cold, okay? So that helps us insulate, keep us warm, like fat is a, our blanket on our body. Some good fats, examples of those would be nuts, like almonds and cashews and peanuts and peanut butter, oil, so maybe you use oil to help cook, olive oil or avocado oil, there's also meats, there's fat in meat, and then avocados is a, ve a vegetable that has fat in it. It's a good fat. Then there's protein. You get energy from protein as well. Protein builds and helps repair the body. So um, it helps repair muscles a lot of times. So when you're working out a lot and your muscles get really tired, protein helps repair those muscles and make them bigger and stronger. Some examples of protein would be in meats, chicken and meat, um, in eggs, lots of protein in eggs, beans, nuts, so nuts have both fat and protein, fish, cheese, and milk, and then carbohydrates. That is our easiest way to get energy quickly. So when you're really feeling sluggish and we need a burst of energy, our body can take a carbohydrate um, and use it for energy the quickest. So examples of carbohydrates would be bread and potatoes and rice and pasta and fruit. So if you're feeling really tired, like you need some energy, good to reach for a carbohydrate. Maybe a quick fruit you can grab eat an apple and you'll have energy quickly. It's our body's quickest way to have energy. Some other ones, some beans and veggies. Also, breaking it down, they say my plate. They give an example of a plate. So here's my plate I've drawn. And they kind of give you an example of how to set up your plate when you have a meal. Generally, you might not have this exact plate for every meal, but it just gives you an example of how to set up your plate and how much um, different foods to give yourself. So we know fruit. We want all different colors, all the way, the whole rainbow, okay? We want lots of vegetables, okay? The more vegetables, the better. A large part of our plate is vegetables, so the more vegetables and fruit, the better. Seeing how fruits and vegetables take up half of our plate, okay, that's good. Next. They say whole grain. So whole grain means um, those are carbohydrates usually. And whole grains are things like pastas and breads and rice, um, tortillas and popcorn and oatmeal. And the reason they say whole grain is typically um, the whole grain is more of the brown. So bra um, whole wheat bread and brown rice. Generally, if it's more brown, it's more healthier, okay? Then protein, like we said before, that helps our body repair, um, helps our muscles grow, and we need lots of protein in our body. So it's about a one-fourth of our plate here. And we said before protein was the fish and chicken and meat and beans and nuts and eggs and some soy, okay? And then our little glass of dairy up here. Um, generally, we want to drink as much water as possible. They say one to two cups of dairy. So dairy is like milk. Um, and we don't really want to have any sugary drinks, so no sodas. Even juices, try to have less juice because there's lots of sugar in juice. Okay, so try to have a variety of fruit, vegetable, protein, grain, and dairy for a healthy diet. 
Okay, Tracy from Room 202 asks, why does our body need nutrients? So, like I talked before, macronutrients, that means big nutrients, those are the fats, proteins, and carbs, and I broke those down in the earlier question, what is fat good for, what is protein good for, what are carbs good for? These are our sources of energy, okay? When they say they have calories, that's our source of energy, okay? They gives us energy. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. So you've heard of vitamins and minerals, right? So vitamins, there are, there's vitamin A and vitamin D and vitamin K and vitamin B and vitamin C, okay? So different vitamins have different functions. Um, vitamin A, a few things that vitamin A does helps you with night vision. Um, it helps develop teeth and bones. Um, and some good sources of vitamin A, carrots, tomatoes, lettuce, egg yolks, milk. Vitamin D, we remember, is we can get from the sun. Our body can convert the sunlight into a vitamin. Isn't that crazy? Then there's also food sources of vitamin D, like fish, and um, eggs and butter. Um, vitamin K, that's an interesting one. Vitamin K helps our blood clot. So when we're bleeding, vitamin K helps our bleeding stop bleeding and clot to make a scab. So when they say blood clot, that means to help make a scab so you don't keep bleeding out, right? That's a very important, important one. So vitamin K helps our blood clot and make a scab. Some um, sources of vitamin K, leafy vegetables, um, meat, dairy products. Vitamin B, there's several types of vitamin Bs. There's B12 and uh, B6. Um, those help our digestion, so that helps break down our fats, proteins, and carbs into a way that our body can use it into the right energy form. Um, some forms of vitamin B, milk, egg yolks, meat, bread, bananas, okay? Vitamin C helps with our wound healing. Um, if we have a wound, it helps heal it. It helps with our immune system. And we know sources of vitamin C are our citrus fruits, so lemons and oranges, um, bananas, um, cabbage, tomatoes. So those are some vitamins and some reasons why we need those vitamins and some food sources. And then there's minerals. So minerals are things you might have heard like calcium, right? Calcium helps our bones. Um, get strong and form, um, milk and cheese and dairy. Then there's something called iron and that helps in the blood. Very important, important, important mineral in your blood. That's in meat, eggs, bread, and leafy green vegetables. Then there's iodine. Um, helps our metabolism and metabolism is how we digest and how we take what we eat and convert it into energy so we can run properly. Um, there's something called zinc and that helps us to grow and develop and it helps wound healing as well like vitamin C. Some zinc is in fish, meat, and beans, and fluoride. Um, that helps our um, keep our strong teeth and that sometimes is in the water so we need lots of vitamins and minerals and protein fat and carbohydrates because lots of them have different functions um, and like we related it the more the better gas and the better oil and the more clean we eat the better our car or our body will run. So we'll be able to run faster and we'll be able to feel better, we'll be less tired, we'll be more energized, our brain will be better, um, we'll be, be able to have a better memory, um, we'll be less kind of sleepy and confused, less brain fog they say, 
So it's hard to keep track of all these vitamins and minerals and carbohydrates and proteins and fats, but just try to eat a balanced diet with a variety of healthy foods and you should get a good source of all of these vitamins and minerals. Where do germs come from? So, germs are everywhere. They're in the air, they're on surfaces, um, but they often get a really bad name. Germs are always bad germs, bad germs, but germs are actually, there's a lot of good germs. So germ, the word germ is a general term and it has four types within it. There's four types of germs. There's bacteria, there's viruses. So generally bacteria and viruses are things that um, cause you to get sick, but there are good bacteria. It's very important. Fungi, that's like a mushroom, okay? So, and then protozoa, that's a tough one. Don't worry about that. So anyway, germs is the broad term. But the very important thing is that there's bad germs that cause you to get sick. That's why we really want to wash our hands and keep ourselves clean. Um, but there are good bacteria. Actually, our body has 100 trillion. That's more than a billion. That's more than a billion. 100 trillion good bacteria in it, okay? If we didn't have bacteria in our body, we wouldn't be able to live. So these little types of germs, these good bacteria, help us. A lot of them live in our digestive system, so that helps our food get through all the way. So these bacteria help us digest our food. They help us absorb um, nutrients, so they help us absorb things that keep us healthy, um, and they help make vitamins. So if we didn't have those good bacteria, we wouldn't be able to live. So we're actually happy that they're there. And a hundred trillion, that is a lot of good bacteria, okay? Um, and things we eat. So when you eat yogurt, there's actually good bacteria in yogurt. That's why yogurt is so healthy. Is it because it gives us more good bacteria to help us digest things? So there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. There's good germs and bad germs. So we can't be scared of germs. We just have to do our best to really, number one most important thing is to keep our hands clean and um, wash our hands because we can't see germs so we don't know if it's a good germ or a bad germ but just try our best to stay clean eat healthy um, and wash our hands is the best way to have good germs more good germs less bad germs how fast can germs spread so we learned that there's four types of germs they're all different. There's all different types. So they're moving at different speeds, but they're just tiny, tiny little living things that we cannot see. You would need a microscope with extreme magnification to see them. Okay. But I did learn that when you sneeze, germs are coming out of your nose. Germs can travel at 100 miles per hour. So that's faster than any car we've driven in. Um, the speed limit on the freeway is 65 miles per hour. So 100 miles per hour, these germs are shooting out of your nose. And they say with every sneeze, it's about 10,000 germs. How long do germs stay on your hair, hands, and body? So like we said, germs are all over our body, all over our hands, all over our hair. Um, but to not think of them as always so bad. They actually help us a lot. And just like humans, germs have a lifespan, so that's how long they live. And depends on the germ, they could have a really short lifespan or it could have a very longer lifespan. For instance, maybe a longer lifespan when they're having a happy life living in our gut, with it, which is our digestive system. Um, as our food passes through, they get to eat some of the food and they're happy and they're benefiting us and we're benefiting them. So it's, they say, in harmony. So that's happy. Everyone's good. They're helping us. We're helping them. 
or it could have a very short lifespan where we're washing our hands and it goes away okay so the question it can be it can be different it can be short or it could be long what can you do to remind yourself not to touch your face so much that's a good question um, so we remembering we are washing our hands and not touching our face because these dirty hands can get these germs in our face right good job um, let me see well the first thing we can do is try to keep clean hands as much as possible because if we do have those clean hands and we forget and we do touch our face then there's less risk of getting those bad germs in um, but maybe teaming up with someone who's around you a lot maybe your mom or dad or sibling and reminding you that when you touch your face maybe they remind you or when you start to rem think you're gonna touch your hands maybe sit on your hands so you start trying to break that habit but it is hard we often just sit like this we are always kind of fidgeting but just being more of aware of our body and just starting to to figure out when we do touch our face and just trying to break the habit but the most important thing is just to keep those hands as clean as you can because when you do forget and you're just touching your face that those hands are cleaner okay I would like you to talk about itchy scalps and good haircuts so um, itchy scalps so the skin on our head and our our scalp is just like the skin on our body and different parts of the year especially winter time we get dry skin and dry skin usually makes us pretty itchy um, the difference is, is that when we get dry skin on our arms and legs we can usually put lotion on it so it's not itchy and it gets less dry but sometimes with those scalps we don't usually put lotion in our hair okay so a good thing to do is number one um, you'll have less dryness if you drink more water so we just always want to make sure we're staying hydrated okay another thing is um, oh and if you're five to eight years old about five glasses of water if you're um, nine to twelve years old seven glasses of water okay and if you're 13 or more years old, 8 to 10 glasses of water, okay? So adults need at least 8 cups of water, okay? So making sure you're hydrated enough so that will make you less dry. And then, um, what else can I say about that? Um, sometimes different shampoos will help with the itchiness. Sometimes they call a shampoo head and shoulders. That can often help with, um, itchiness, um... For me personally, sometimes I put coconut oil in my hair um, and I just leave it there for a while and then I wash it out. Sometimes that might help you. That's what helps me sometimes. Um, just putting coconut oil in it, you'll look really funny and greasy, but it will get some oil to help your skin and then you just wash it out with your shampoo and conditioner and it might help your itchy scalp. Mohammed's question from room 202. How do our teeth form? Mohammed, this is another really, really complex one with really big words. And um, so, great question. You stumped me on this one too. Um, I'll try to break it down into the most basic. Um, but basically, before we're born, so when, when we're in our mommy's belly, when we're only six weeks into our mommy's belly, a tooth substance begins to form okay so you're super super tiny in development in the belly then at be still before we're born at three to four months of development in mommy's belly that hard substance begins to develop then we're born okay and at about six months to one year baby teeth start coming up Okay, and the reason we have baby teeth and permanent teeth is that when we're little, our jaw cannot fit all these permanent teeth. Okay, um, I think you have about 20 baby teeth and I think 32 permanent teeth. So you have these baby teeth, they fall out, 
and you get the permanent teeth. Um, and those, um, like we've been talking about in the dental lessons, once those, you get a whole nose or those get cavities, they cannot repair themselves. So that's why it's so important to take good care of our teeth. Okay, so a lot of the teeth development happens before we're born. How do you make your teeth whiter? So, most important thing, brushing our teeth two or more times a day. So always in the morning, always at night, okay? You can always brush at lunch two or more. The more times you brush your teeth, the whiter they'll be. We want to make sure we're flossing. Another way to have whiter teeth is to eat crunchy fruits and vegetables. So think of when you bite into a carrot, you have that crunch that actually cleans your teeth. So when you have cleaner teeth, you'll have whiter teeth. Um, and then also to limit things that will stain your teeth. So if you drink a lot of soda, that actually can stain your teeth. Um, you probably don't drink any coffee, but Coffee can stain your teeth, so limiting our coffee to and things that stain our teeth. But number one, brushing, flossing, and fruits and vegetables will have nice healthy teeth that are whiter. Okay, Santiago's question from room 202. How do bones form? You stumped me, Santiago. This is a really complex one, but I will try to break it down into pretty simple way. Um, it's very, very complex with big words like ossification and osteocytes and osteoblasts. So that's too complex, but I'll try to break it down into a more simple way. So we learned that when you're a baby, you have 300 bones and those 300 bones are made of a substance called cartilage. And think of cartilage as a middle substance that's um, less hard than bone, but more hard than muscle. It's like a cartilage is kind of like a rubbery um, substance, right? So it's in the middle of bone and muscle is cartilage. So you start with 300 bones, mostly made out of cartilage. Okay. From there, cartilage begins to divide so you have um, cartilage cells um, and these cells continue to divide so you have more and more cartilage then that's increasing our amount of cartilage so as you're a baby you're tiny and then as you continue growing you you're making more and more cartilage so you're having an increased number of cartilage then um, you're converting this cartilage, this more rubbery substance, into bone with the help of calcium. And that's why they say to eat calcium for strong, healthy bones. Um, and by the time you're 25, you have about 206 bones from when you were born, 300 bones. So almost 100 less bones because these bones fuse together making big longer bones okay so we're going from cartilage to bone with the help of calcium and some foods with calcium would be milk yogurt almonds broccoli figs um, and the thing to remember about calcium is that calcium's best friend is vitamin D so when you have vitamin D which is a vitamin in foods and also vitamin D is very important you get vitamin D from being in the Sun and allowing your body to convert that sunlight into vitamin D so that's an interesting one right vitamin D is from the Sun okay vitamin D foods are egg yolk types of fish mushrooms and when you eat calcium and vitamin D together they help each other um, absorb into the body that much better. So when you just eat these calcium by itself or vitamin D by itself, it's not able to get into the body as much. But when you eat them together, they're best friends and our body is able to process those better and to make stronger bones. I hope that makes sense. It's 
pretty confusing, but great question. Thank you, Santiago. We're taking our cartilage to bone because we're making cartilage continues to divide, making more and more cartilage. It's getting bigger, more and more cartilage, and then our cartilage is converted to bone, which is that harder substance. Okay, Jamie from 202 asks, why do our muscles get sore? So, our muscles are made of many, many things called muscle fibers. So, basically our muscles look like a bunch of lines called muscle fibers. And when we work out really hard, um, our muscle fibers get tired and they can even, some of them can even break. But the good thing is that when we get sore, this is actually a good thing because this is meaning that our muscle fibers are not only repairing themselves, but they're getting stronger. So a good way to think of a muscle fiber is if you see a piece of celery, you can see all those lines within the celery, that's fiber. And so our muscles are kind of like that. It's a bunch of long strings and when we work out really hard and we're growing our body and we're growing our muscles, these fibers can break. And then the repairing of these fibers make our muscles sore. So it's a good thing if your muscles are sore, it means you're getting stronger and it means you are, um, the muscles are getting bigger and bigger muscles are good. That means you're healthy.